Here is the range equation. In the previous video we found that two different launch angles produce the same range. In the range equation, what is the ratio of the durations of flights launched at the higher and lower angles? Solving for t in the range equation we get t equals r divided by the initial velocity v sub zero times the cosine of the launch angle theta zero. Forming the ratio of flight times for the high h and low l trajectories we have t sub h divided by t sub l. After canceling the common factors we have cosine of theta l divided by cosine of theta h. Since theta l is 45 minus n degrees and theta h is 45 plus n degrees we get this equation. Using the trig identity we get this equation. Sine of 45 and cosine of 45 are the same number. So we switch sine 45's from this equation into cosine of 45's and get this. But now we can divide each term in the numerator and each term in the denominator by cosine 45 and we get the result cosine n plus sine n divided by cosine n minus sine n. Next we divide each of these four terms by cosine n to form tan n. We get th over tl equals 1 plus tan n divided by 1 minus tan n. For n equal 21.7 degrees we get 2.326 as occurred in the previous problem. In the range equation, when the motion begins and ends at ground level, how many seconds does it take for the launched object to reach the peak of its motion? Please fill in all the algebra steps to obtain these results. In the equation v sub y equals v sub y zero minus gt, we set the final speed v sub y equal to zero and the initial speed v sub y zero equals v0 sine theta 0 and then solve for t to get the time to the peak is v0 sine theta divided by g. Question b, what is the total time that the object spends in the air? The answer is twice this much. Question c, what is the maximum height of the motion? In equation 4, we set y sub 0 equals 0 since we're launched from the ground, we set v sub y equals zero and the y component of the initial velocity v sub y zero equals v zero sine theta zero. Solve for y to get y equals one half v zero squared sine squared theta divided by g. Please fill in all the algebra steps to obtain these results. What is the ratio of maximum heights of flights launched at the higher and lower angles? We found that the height goes as the sine of the launch angle squared, so we form the ratio to cancel the common factors. We have the ratio of the maximum height when launched at the high angle, y sub h, divided by the maximum height when launched at the low angle, y sub l, equals sine theta h over sine theta l squared. But the high launch angle can be written as 45 plus n, and the low launch angle can be written as 45 minus n. And then we use the trig identity to obtain this equation. But the sine of 45 and the cosine of 45 are the same number, so these are all canceled. Next, to form a tan theta, we divide every term by cosine n to get yh over yl is the square of tan n plus 1 over 1 minus tan n. For n equal 22 degrees, this ratio is 5.6, which means that the high launch angle reaches 5.6 times higher into the air than does the lower launch angle.
for motion described by the range equation, what is the object's direction of travel at t equal t total over 4, where t total is the total duration of the flight in seconds. Relative to the positive x-axis, the direction of motion is always found from tan theta equals v sub y divided by v sub x. But we know that v sub y equals v sub y zero minus gt. So we have tan theta is v sub y zero minus gt divided by v sub x. This is the y component of the initial launch velocity, which we set to v sub zero sine theta zero and we set this t to be t total over 4. A couple of minutes ago we decided that t total was 2 v0 sine theta 0 over g. So we get tan theta is v0 sine theta 0 minus a half of v0 sine theta 0. These two quantities are the same. We factor out 1 minus a half to get this half over here. Now we have 1 half v0 sine theta 0 divided by v sub x, which is v0 cosine theta 0. But this sine divided by this cosine is a tan. The v zeros cancel. So we have tan theta equals 1 half tan theta 0 when 1 quarter of the total flight time has occurred. In another problem, you'll find the direction of travel when t is three quarters of the total time. First, we look at acceleration on an inclined plane. This is a hill that's tilted by angle theta. The acceleration due to gravity, g, points straight to the center of the Earth. In this problem, a pinball rolls down a hill of angle theta. We'll choose to place the y-axis parallel to the surface of the incline. We'll need the component of the vector g, g sub y, that's parallel to the y-axis along the surface of the incline plane. In this triangle, all three angles add up to 180 degrees. This one is angle theta. This is a right angle 90 degrees. So this angle must be 90 minus theta. Here's another right angle. This angle plus this angle add up to 90. So we conclude that this is theta also, the same as the angle of the incline. The component of vector g that is parallel to the surface is this side. We have g sub y equals g sine theta. Because this side of the triangle is opposite the angle theta, so the velocity and acceleration of the pinball as it rolls down the hill are given by v sub y equals v sub y zero plus a sub y t equals v sub y zero minus g sine theta multiplied by t. The y component of acceleration is g sine theta and it gets a minus sign because this component points in our minus y direction. In a pinball game, the ball rolls around a surface that is inclined at an angle of 0 0.234 degrees. The xy coordinate system lies in the tilted plane of the surface. The ball has no acceleration in the x direction, and its acceleration in the y direction is a sub y equals minus g sine of 0 0.234 degrees equals minus 0 0.04 meters per second squared. The flipper hits the ball, giving it an initial velocity vector v sub 0 equals 0.08 i hat plus 0.06 j hat meters per second. As the ball moves horizontally in the x direction with constant v sub x, it also moves in the positive y direction, slows, and then reverses. When it has returned to its starting level at y equals 0, how far will it have moved in the x direction? We use the range equation because the motion begins and ends at y equals zero. In obtaining the range equation, we already took into account the negative sign in the y component of acceleration. So we have r equals v zero squared sine two theta divided by the absolute value of a sub y. 
the initial velocity vector has magnitude v sub 0 equals the square root of 0 0.08 squared plus 0 0.06 squared equals 0 0.1 meters per second. The initial angle is theta sub 0 equals tan inverse v sub y 0 divided by v sub x and we get 36.9 degrees. The calculation of the range gives r equals 0 0.24 meters. As a further example, suppose a groove were cut in the plane along a line that makes an angle alpha with the plus x axis. If you release a marble at the top of the groove, then the y component of its gravitational acceleration would be minus 0.04 sine alpha meters per second squared.